So for our notes here, we will say a simple product is simple. It doesn't have too much to add to it. The description, the title, uh, price and a picture, other stuff is a little bit extra. You don't have to categorize it. You don't have to put tags. But all of that is very important for organization. So we will say organization via categories or tags is important. So people can search or filter your products. So let's make together a couple more products, a couple more simple products. Then we can set up, we can see how the system is set up for, for organization, for filtering and so forth. And um, we'll do a, a few more products under variables and such and, and we'll see about making the, the menu bar. Um, because let me, let me tell you what we're going to do eventually here. Right now, up on our menu bar, we've got shop and all of the products would be visible on this screen. But I've made a type of a product, cake. What if I make seven more cakes? And then what if I make um, cookies? And then what else? Cupcakes. I have all of these types of products. So instead of a person scrolling and scrolling and scrolling to find a cupcake, what about if I have my mouse on top of shop and it gives you the menu items of cupcake, cookies, birthday cakes, etc. So a type of a product has its own menu item. We will do that, but first we need those different types of products. Wherever you're at right here, I'm currently in the front end. I'm actually looking at it like a person. I'm not in the dashboard. I'm not in the back end. And I can tell that because the top left does not say dashboard. I'm actually looking at my site. So if you're in the front end, I need to click to go back to the dashboard. If you're already in the dashboard, it says you're in the dashboard. I want to add a new product, this time um, a different kind of cake. I want to make another cake product, but a different kind of cake. So if you hover over products, let's add a new cake. Product. This time I'll say, I'll call it right here, um, square chocolate chip cake this is in the descript in the title of the product it already has the keywords and descriptions and such square chocolate chip cake this is what I was saying that this is a spot for you to write keywords if they make sense the name of the product is square chocolate chip cake. I'm not going to force in keywords if they don't make sense for the product. And uh, we're not going to go into a lot of detail about writing real content. I'm just going to put some placeholder gibberish. But then we can add the category of cakes. This particular product will exist as a cake, but also as another category of, let's say, sugar-free. This is a kind of a cake that it has besides sugar some other sweetener so let's add a new category sugar free the names of these categories that that you write right here the users the their visitors will see these so I would recommend to write them properly with real capitalization and you know writing it like real words for people that they will see it I wouldn't write it you know without capitals and symbols and such write it as a real word you then have to click the next here it's funny to me that there's a button that says add new category and then there's a button that says add new category one should be say something like name a category and then save a category but they're both called add new category you click the first one to type the name and you click the second one to actually create it so make sure you click the second one and then if it worked, you will get a new category up here with a, with a new check mark turned on. So a product can be in more than one category. And think about that if it's something for you to do because it'll make it easier for your visitors to find your product. Question? Under 
under products and add new. It should be this. Are you sure you're under products and not some other student? So the, the product has two categories. I didn't mention today so far tags. I'll mention that briefly. Remember last time I said categories are the big ideas. The big ideas. And tags are the little details. I might sell a chocolate chip cookie. And I might sell a three-layer chocolate cake, and I might sell sugar-free chocolate muffins. Well, all three of them are three different things, three categories, cakes, muffins, cookies. But all three of them share chocolate. So chocolate could be a tag, because that's one of the details, whereas the big category is one's a cake, one's a, one's a muffin, and one's a cookie. Let's say under categories here, just to just to see examples, I, I will say that this one's also vegan. So I'll click Add. And now this particular one has that. And if I want to remove it, there's a little Remove icon. If I want to add more, then I add more. What, what details, what sort of keywords can I attach to a product? So I'll just put one. product image we you saw how to do that previously so go go set, go get a product image <coughs> upload select We're keeping this as a simple product. I'm putting a price, regular price of 14, but a sale price of $11. This product data box has all of these subcategories. We were looking at general, setting its price. Let's look at some of these other subcategories. Inventory, uh, manage stock. I'll come back to SKU, SKU in a moment. Manage stock. I don't have that turned on, which means I have, it, for all intents and purposes, unlimited amount. I can make more. But if I click that on and I say I've only got 12 in total to sell, it will keep track of that. And then it'll tick down. Now there's 11 to sell. And now 10, etc. And then when they run out, well actually before they run out, here by default it says when you when there's two left, I will get an email that's telling me me the administrator, I'll get an email that says stock is running low. I can set that to whatever I want, back orders. So if the product is if the product is sold out at the moment, they cannot order it anymore. It's sold out. And notice some of these have a little question mark. If managing stock, this controls whether or not back orders are allowed. And you have the options allow but notify customer. So they can try to buy it, but then it will allow the it will then tell them this is on back order. You it may be a um, it may be a delay or you may not get it, etc. etc. or or allow. So I'm not going to do manage stock, but do you see that's an easy thing to do there about turning it on or off? SKU, SKU, stop keep, stock keeping unit is a completely arbitrary number, is a way for you to keep track of like your inventory in, in, in QuickBooks or wherever you're keeping track of it externally. It's not necessary for a lot of people, but this is a way for, let's say, um, this is you know CK for cake dash CH for chocolate 001. It's whatever thing you make up to keep track of it. 
in your bookkeeping software that this particular thing is an item that exists and it's optional so you don't even have to add it so I won't but that's what the SKU is the SKU I can turn an item out of stock on back order etc most likely I want it in stock yes I can sell it it's out of stock I, I can't sell it that makes sense and then sold individually by default a person gets that little box well I'll just show it by default a person will see the little box to add more than one right here I want more than one I don't want to sell so many of them so I can say sold individually turn this on to only allow one of this item to be bought in a single order they can come back tomorrow and put another one in their cart sure but right now if they're in my store there won't be another button there won't be a way for them to add more than one you just can only buy one shipping uh, we won't deal with that just yet but notice here's a spot for you to type in what's the weight of this uh, and its dimensions and such and what is it tied to regarding how much will it cost to ship that's a little more complex we'll get to that a little later but notice it's pretty detailed because when you buy an item off of a off of a walmart.com or amazon.com or target.com behind the scenes they have to manage all of this and they get charged by the post office or UPS or FedEx or whatever to ship you your stuff and there's a whole complex system of based on weights and distance how much it costs so we won't change this just yet but notice that there is a, a whole section on that if you are selling products that that uh, have some sort of weight that you need to ship linked products we've got upsells and cross sells so upsells uh, products which you recommend instead of so do you ever visit a website and you're about to buy something and before you fully check out it says well if you're buying this you might actually want this one instead so we can set ourselves up here they're about to buy the you know the the square chocolate cake or whatever well we can if we've got other products already set up right here um, we can say you're about to buy this but maybe this is a better deal for you and usually the better deal is better deal for us so we're gonna sell them something more expensive so that's upsell cross-sell is also related to that but this is in this is in terms of uh, this is what you also promote like you're about to buy this if you also buy this this works well with it maybe we've got other products that we sell like chocolate milk now, you need to have the product already before connecting it here it's not that it lets you connect create the product here you have to have all your products created and then you can link them together either in terms of buy the more expensive one or buy the companion piece I'll make a note here linked products can be very useful you need them created first and then you can link them as necessary upsell another product to convince them to buy instead cross sell another product to convince them to also buy So if I'm selling that cake, maybe I also want to sell my gallon of milk with it. Or instead of that cake, maybe I want to try to sell them the one that's you know, four layers instead of three. Attributes. This one's pretty complex. We'll come back to it later. But this is the one where we will uh, make variations. I want to sell cookies, but I want to sell them in a batch of one dozen or two dozen or half dozen. Or I'm selling t-shirts that are small, medium, and large. 
maybe with different prizes, uh, prices and such. These are these are attributes or variations, which we'll come back to. Advanced. Um, enter an optional note to send customer after they purchase. So this is very optional for a lot of people. What are you are you going to give them some sort of message when they buy your product? Will they get an automatic email saying something like, uh, "We are working on your product. It's handmade. It'll you'll get you'll get it very soon." This menu order, don't worry about it. Reviews. By default, people can write a review on your products. So that's up to you to decide if you want that or not. Get more options is related to this whole cottage industry of WordPress uh, plugins. Uh, there's a lot of companies out there that create WordPress plugins for free or not for free that give you extra features and so here if you would like the um, name your price let customers pay what they want useful for donations tips and more I'm seeing that kind of a little bit more often on these sorts of things donations and tips and such where instead of a, some company trying to sell you something at a fixed price they do sort of like the the donation to the museum model where it's like, yeah, the museum is free, but would you like to donate so that we don't shut down? So, this is an ironically the extension is a fixed price. <laughs> exactly, you have to pay some amount to get that extension, but then you can have people pay what they want for your product. And there's other ones over here. Browse other extensions. You can look at those on your own. What else can I do? I want to integrate Google Ads. This one's zero dollars. I want to add a whole booking system. Well, that's two hundred forty-nine dollars. I want to add membership. I want to sell memberships on my site. That's $149. So yeah, some of these are free. Some of them are not. And those that are not free, well, that's the cost of doing business if you want some of these features. So I won't select anything extra. I'll just go back to the top and select Publish. We'll create one more simple product, add new. This time it's your choice. Create some kind of cookie. So make up a cookie, put a little text, put an image, put categories. Make a, make a new category, but also put it into sugar-free. So give that a try. Make your own product, and then we will see what we can do with it. So just create a new product and then publish it and I'm visiting my shop and we'll see what we can do with that. But I've got three items to play with, just create some things and then we'll go on in a moment. Um, 
unfortunately cross cells are more in line with products on your own site that particular feature on that screen will only work for other products on your own site however you can cross sell in a slightly different way um, so like the rainbow cookie here the um, linked products it will only so if I had here cake it will only show me other things on my site uh, I can cross sell off site by also creating instead of a simple product we have an external product um, that will link over to some product on another site you can also add it to the description so it's not as smart as what this one will do it'll be part of the description and in there you can say in, you can also add this product click here so it's not as direct or integrated as it is with this here but there's other ways to do it Yeah, usually uh, these URLs, these addresses are based on a, a folder structure. Like uh huh. But WordPress is, depending on how it creates the content, it may be creating an address, but not necessarily an actual location on the disk, because in the database it's being organized somehow in there, some 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 sort of higher hierarchy. So that's a good idea. It doesn't actually make that folder anywhere, but it is internal to the site. It's organization. If we wanted to save our site today, it's not enough just to save the WordPress folder. We have to go find the, like the, PHP the database, database yeah. and MySQL and yeah, all yeah. the pieces. <laughs> exactly. So oh. if, if we had, uh, that's why today, this two-day class is only like a practice here. If we made an amazing thing, we can't quite take it with us because we, we would need another yeah. lecture to put it all together and take it. It's not just copying the folder, unfortunately. Is there something in the dashboard where you can kind of zip up your site? Not gonna... built into WordPress, unfortunately. It would be an extra plugin if you want to research it called oh. Duplicator. Okay. Uh, we, we don't have time to really do it in class, but if you want to research it yourself, there is a way to, to export your site, but it's kind of advanced for the moment. Okay, so I've got some products in my shop. Let's do what I was saying earlier, that I would like a little bit better organization. Right now, I've only got three products, but what if I had 30 products? I would have to scroll through my list of 30 thumbnails to find the right one. What I want is if I hover over the shop button, I want the drop-down menu that will say cookies, cakes, and pies, and then I go directly to the thing that I want, and it will only show me the thing that I want on the screen instead of everything. So. In general, let me write the concept and then we'll do this together. If you organize your products into categories or tags, you can then create a menu item that will only show that category or tag. Yes. Everything got to you. So, 
our categories and tags can help us organize our our site. So in general, the idea is uh, there's a step create a product and add a category. Step two, edit your menu to add the category. We'll say here to a optional um, assign your menu. We'll see what that means in a moment. And then three or two B um, optional arrange your menu and then save your menu so menu the menu bar the list of all of the links on your site it might have sort of like a default design or content which we can edit of course like right now it just says shop I want it to say you know shop for cakes or below it shop for um, pies I want to go to the various sections all of these three products should have had at least one category assigned to them so we can do the next part here we'll go back to the dashboard if you hover your mouse over appearance we have then a section of menus click on menus Scrolling down here, depending on your, your theme, the design of your site, you may have more than one place where a menu could exist. In this particular design, in this particular theme, it's just at the top. Sometimes you have a menu on the side or down on the footer. But, that, but the design of your site is going to dictate where your menu can exist. We didn't, we didn't specify anything, so it's just showing a default collection of links at the top over here. In my case, home, cart, check out my account, sample, page, shop. I don't want sample page. And under shop, I want more detail. And maybe I want to move my account, or maybe I want to move uh, checkout under cart. So because we never told it what we wanted, it doesn't quite know, and it puts everything. So what we need to do here is we need to create a new menu. We need to create some organization. So click Create a New Menu. And then you'll get a, an empty box right here. What would you like to call it? We'll just call it Main Menu. You can have more than one menu. You can have one menu that's active this week and then another one that's active next week. Well, why would you do that? What if you're having sales? What if you're having you know, seasonal sales? There's one menu that is going to display home, shop, about. And then when you're having your sale, your menu is going to display home, deals, contact us. Right? Your menu design could change so we can have different menus with different clickable items. So we'll, we'll give it a name and we'll click Create Menu. And before we edit it further, I would say here, this is a very important. People miss this all the time as a beginner. I make my menu, it's amazing, it's organized how I want, and I can't see it. Well, the reason for that is we never assigned it. Like, um, like it says here. Where would you like this menu to be displayed at? In this theme, I have a primary menu area, a secondary menu area and a special area when someone is on a mobile device. So most likely I want my main menu in the primary menu. And probably when someone is on a mobile device as well. This particular theme has those three locations. Others might have one or, or four or whatever. So that depends on the design, on the theme. So I'll click Save, even though there's nothing in my menu yet. But I want to save that because people always forget about this. I want to lock it in. I've got a menu. It's going to be shown at a certain location. 
add menu items from the column at left. So at the left, I've got pages, posts, custom links, categories, WooCommerce things. I've got the pages, most recent or view all. I've got pages of my website that I want to add to a menu. So I want the home, I want all of them basically except sample page. So click the check mark on all of those except sample and then add to menu. So it says drag each item into the order you prefer. Click the arrow on the right to reveal additional configurations. But now it shows it to me vertical, but when I view it, you don't have to change your screen yet, but when I view it, it'll show it horizontal. But when I view it here from top to bottom, it'll appear left to right. And actually, I want, I want shop to be second right after home. So all you have to do is click it and drag it to where you want it. Now, be careful here. Because when you drag it and it's indented into something, that means it'll be a drop-down menu. It'll be below something. It's got to be lined up on the left as the same side here, so that it's in the same hierarchy. That will eventually look like this, where I have home, shop, cart. So where, however you organize these is what, how they will appear. Now what if I want, um, OK, home, shop, cart, checkout. What if I want checkout to be a sub menu item of cart? So I just drag it so that it's indented. And my account is also there. So the idea is they put their mouse on top of cart, and the menu opens up to show you checkout in my account. Instead of all of them being on the same row, the same level, one is inside of another. So you don't have to change your screen yet. I'm just showing you back and forth. Now I've got home shop cart. And when I put my mouse on top of cart, the other items are there. So you could do sub items of sub items. So that's either good or a mistake, meaning you could do that. Now when they hover over cart, they will see checkout. When they hover over checkout, they will see my account. Uh, that, in my case, is a mistake. I don't want it to be that you know tucked in. On it like that. But what I'm saying is when you move these around, be careful. You might put something inside of something inside of something. So you've got a sub item under, under something, under something, under something. So like on this one, I hover over shop, and then that has a cart, and then that has a checkout, and that has it in my account. I don't actually want that. I didn't create it, I selected it from the left side, view all, check mark, add. So here we've got home, shop, cart, check out my account. But the idea earlier was under shop, I wanted to be able to go directly to cakes or cookies or whatever. Well, those were categories. If you open the categories, and usually you will either see most used or view all. Oh, wait, actually, I know. Um, this category is not the same category as the as your product category. This is your blog category. Okay, this one actually is hidden. Okay, we have to do we have to activate this. I forgot about this. Um, WordPress has a variety of, of features, some of which are hidden because there's just too much to, to work with. So if you scroll all the way to the top, all the way to the top of the screen, you have screen options. You have a tab at the very top, screen options. There's things hidden in this screen because there's already a lot here. If you open screen options, I want boxes to pick pages, posts, custom links, categories, product categories. That's still the one that I want. Categories are the categories of your articles, 
but product categories are obviously the product categories. Now when I activate product categories, I have some new I have new boxes down here, product categories. View all. In my case, I've got the cakes and the sugar free. When I add them, to the menu I can put them below shop so if you don't see product categories you have to first go to the top and select screen options and make sure you turn on also show me the boxes for product categories When you make changes, you want to remember to save your menu. You click your Save button. And when I visit Site, now I have a Shop button. And Shop still works. That If I click Shop, it shows all my products. But now when I hover over shop, I also have cakes. When I go to cakes, it shows me the two things marked as a cake. When I go to sugar-free, it shows me the two things marked as sugar-free. Did that work? Anyone need a little help? Menu items are a little complex, um, but here's how we got it. Anyone need a little help on that? Yes.
Okay, so this menu uh, system is very powerful because um, behind the scenes it's doing complex things. But for us, all we need to do is just drag these boxes where we need them to be. And when you drag them, you make sub-menu items. And you can have different things inside of the menus over here. Let's do another sort of powerful thing here. Uh, what if I wanted to have uh, social media? What if I wanted to have a way for people to get in touch with me on Facebook or Twitter or, or whatever? So I want to make a new menu item for social media. But then below the menu, that's where they can click on Facebook, etc. Now this is a little bit more advanced because we don't have any page called social media. We could create a page and then add Facebook, etc. But here's a possible trick. We can have a menu item that will exist that will just be social. And its purpose is just to hover over it. And then it drops down to show Facebook, Twitter, whatever. The way we would do that is with a custom link. So if you open up custom link, it says, what's the address? And what's the text that will appear? Just to put, to put whatever, I'm going to put Facebook. If you have a Facebook address, you can put the whole Facebook address if you want. I'll just put the home page of Facebook, and then the link text will be Facebook. This is what people will see. The menu item will say Facebook. We can make it say, visit our Facebook. You can make it say whatever you want. I'm just going to make it say Facebook. And when someone clicks on that, it will take them to Facebook. So I have to, of course, first add it. Now we've got a new item there, Facebook. I will add another one for practice, Twitter. You can add a third one if you'd like. But I want to add three or two social media items. Now I've got, I've got to remember to save that. And I would have Facebook and Twitter. But actually my idea was I wanted to have it, its own dedicated social media. And when I hover over that, then it appears Facebook and Twitter. So the final piece of the puzzle is after I've added these custom links of where they're going to go, I can add something called social media. The URL will delete that and put the pound sign. That's a placeholder. Normally, the URL would be a link to go to some website, a, a, a web address to go somewhere. This one isn't really going to go anywhere. It's going to serve a purpose to be something visible. When they hover over, it pops up to show you Twitter, Facebook. So it doesn't actually have a link. And this pound sign by itself like that will, will do that purpose, that it will just be a link, but it won't actually do anything. When I add the menu, now I have a sort of a placeholder where I can move these social networks into it. I've got a link that doesn't go anywhere, but it's there for me to hover over to actually see what I need them to see. Got any link? Okay, that's nice. Um, I thought you had to put something there, but that's even better. So if you take that out,
Okay, that's nice. So it doesn't look like the little hand like you can click. Okay, that's very useful. Thank you. So if you would like to make a change to an existing menu item, you can click the triangle to open it back up. So I guess I'm kind of thinking about it in the old version of WordPress. You had to, you had to put something. Uh, but it looks like if you put nothing for the address, the slight difference will be that if you do have something in the URL box, it will behave like you can click on it. So the difference here is if I hover over it, it looks like I can click it, but it doesn't do anything. So if I don't want the little finger like it's going to be clickable, you can leave off any address. So for any of these, oops, I misspelled Twitter. You can go back to the triangle next to the item, and it opens it up to fix their Twitter address or the Twitter word. And to some degree, the items above too, like under shop. Even though the screen is was originally called shop, I could change it to, you know, store or buy. I can change whatever label appears in the menu. Make it say buy stuff. And now instead of having the usual just shop, it says buy stuff. So you can change your menu items to have different text than what they originally had. And it tells you here when you make changes, well this this was originally titled a shop. You won't see that unless you change it and save it. But if I if you do change it, it reminds you what the original name was. Okay, I think we'll take a break in a moment and when we come back we will work with a variable product. All of these are simple products. You know, this one cookie is simple, it's just that one cookie, one price, etc. But I want to get more complex in terms of I want to sell, you know, one cupcake versus a dozen cupcakes versus two dozen. So variations. It's 8.10, we'll take a break until 8.20, and then we'll see how that works.